When Primoz Roglic snatched the Maglia Rosa from Geraint Thomas in dramatic fashion on the penultimate stage of this year's Giro d'Italia, a trend had been set. Heartbreak for Geraint Thomas. It will be Primoz Roglic who will win the Giro d'Italia. Jumbo Visma were on the path to an historic and unprecedented clean sweep of the three Grand Tours, with three different riders too. Jonas Vingegaard's second Tour de France triumph was possibly the least unexpected of the victories for the Dutch team, but nonetheless it was another demonstration of the strength in depth within the squad. The most prominent of their domestiques, Sepp Kuss, finally spread his GC wings during the Vuelta España. The ever-present American's victory was only challenged by his teammates as Jumbo Visma secured all three podium spots. Set Kuss, winner of La Vuelta. And right here, right now, you've got the winners of all three Grand Tours. It was without doubt an incredible achievement, but what do their rival World Tour teams make of this domination? I think it's, uh, it's difficult for a lot of us because uh, there haven't been so many opportunities this Vuelta. You know, I would say normally uh, the Vuelta is one of the best Grand Tours to come to, um, to go for your chances in the breakaway, you know, to try to win a stage uh, like that. And uh, I mean, we knew already before the start there was such a good start list, you know, not just Jumbo, but UAE and Remco and everyone. Um, but yeah, Jumbo is really, uh, yeah, they've been smashing everyone. So it makes it tough because uh, even the last days, uh, you can try to get in the breakaway, but then the breakaway doesn't go to the line either. So, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty closed race, and uh, it's not easy uh, when you're trying to get something out of the race. There are a lot of guys, uh, yeah, suffering and a little bit uh, fed up, but, I mean, you know, that is what it is. Uh, you know, Jumbo, they, they're a level above uh, almost everyone else in the race right now, and uh, I think it's going to force a lot of teams to go back to the drawing board this winter and uh, yeah, try to catch up. You know, I think it, it's maybe a little bit like uh, Sky, you know, back in the day when they really started to take off. Uh, you know, it took a few years for them to sort of get rolling. And then once that, you know, they got everything into place, uh, they were, you know, really here. And I think all the other teams, you know, they, they looked at all the different places where they could try to catch up and, um, you know, I would say most people bridged the gap. So I think we're going to see the same thing again now uh, with altitude camps, you know, equipment, uh, really looking at all the details. And I think all of us, uh, all the other teams, um, we have some work to do. And whether we like it or not, uh, if they're the best, you know, they have every right to win every stage. But the price of competing with the best can be too high for many of the World Tour teams. We saw this with Sky too, but when they arrived, they began to innovate. I think that was good for cycling because in the end, we all had to push ourselves. The difference is that we already believed we were at a certain level. I don't want to tell you that we're comfortable, far from it, because we continue to evolve. But we thought that we're at that level to be competitive. And in the end, we see that no, there are still differences and we're still already starting to run out of resources. We've seen that they're not only dominating the Giro and the Tour, but they're dominating the Vuelta, and that in the end is leaving very few options for the smaller teams. They're making it very difficult for us, and the morale of the riders is also going down. I think that most of this car park is longing for the Vuelta to end and to look for another opportunity.